minds, boundless potential. Let's celebrate the brilliance of children with autism. Difficulty listening, troublemaking eye contact, sensitive to changes in light, noise, and other sensory outputs, difficulty in having conversations. Those are just a few of the challenges faced by those living with autism. And as we observe World Autism Awareness Day, let us learn to be mindful, patient, and kind. We have more coming up in today's show. Don't move a muscle. We'll be right back. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, April 2, 2024. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has welcomed the Vineyards at Deanery housing development, which supports the government's vision of improving housing stocks and redeveloping urban spaces like Vineyard Town. Mr. Holness took part in the ribbon-cutting ceremony last week, a public-private partnership through the Jamaica Mortgage Bank. The two-block complex includes studio and two-bedroom apartments with a penthouse on the sixth floor of both blocks. Even as he welcomed developments such as this, which serve to redevelop urban spaces and the city of Kingston, the Prime Minister insists that it must be done in an orderly way. He says wide-scale development in this manner will help to reduce the cost of production and enable more affordable units. So that we create a critical mass so that we can have higher densities without compromising one the sustainability and the protection of the environment but increased convenience findings of the 2022 jamaica multiple indicator cluster survey mics have shown that the country is making significant advances in several areas of child development Data on education for the island's 700,000 children shows 94% of those aged 2 to 4 are developmentally on track. The survey also reveals that 99% completed primary school and 95% of adolescents aged 17 to 19 completed grade 9. The mixed 2022 findings show significant advances in the country. It is commendable that 99% of Jamaica children are completing primary school and 95% of adolescents aged 17 to 19 have completed grade 9. It is also commendable that Jamaica continues to see high levels of vaccination in the first years of our baby lives. Jamaica's fourth MIC survey was released recently. It provides policymakers with high-quality data to support the country's efforts towards achieving the 2030 Agenda and the National Development Plan. Children face development risks when there is, for example, inadequate nutrition, poor education, an unsafe environment, poor parenting, and inadequate social amenities and healthcare services. It is therefore critical that as we strive towards developed country status, we continually assess the status of children as a development imperative. MIX is a valuable tool designed to do just that. For the first time, data was disaggregated on children with functional difficulties within the overall results. The MICS report shows that challenges remain in the performance of students in numeracy and reading at the age level of 7 to 14. It's reported that 38% of this group did not acquire foundational reading skills, while only 50% acquired foundational numeracy skills. Additionally, work is needed to increase the attendance of children in the upper secondary school age of 15 to 16 years or higher from 82% to the national target of 95%. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Mining has partnered with the Northern Caribbean University, NCU, to plant 40 acres of dairy fodder. Dairy fodder is a protein source, such as dried hay, used to keep cattle healthy and boost their breeding effectiveness. The partnership was signed on Thursday at the launch of the Jamaica Dairy Development Board and NCU Dairy Revitalization Project. President of NCU Dr. Lincoln Edwards says the aim is to transform the existing operation within the dairy unit into an all-inclusive operation. 
This is to include animal care, reproduction, feeding management, milking and value-added processing that provides tutorial interface and commercial output. Agriculture Minister Floyd Green says it is time for Jamaica to reclaim its role as a world leader in dairy by increasing the amount of milk being produced. This, he asserts, can be achieved by implementing modern technologies such as artificial insemination, focusing on fodder banks, and selecting grass varieties that are most suited to Jamaica's changing climate. He also emphasizes the importance of training future agriculturalists beginning at NCU. As a result, the ministry has provided the institution with six Jamaica Hope cattle and a new milking parlor is to be constructed. Further initiatives are being developed to target secondary school students to pursue careers in the dairy sector, while continuous work is being done to improve cattle genetics and rebuild stockpiles. The National Housing Trust, NHT, will be offering an amnesty from interest and penalties on outstanding contributions to MSMEs and charity organizations. This will benefit institutions with 50 or fewer employees that earn annual revenue of less than $425 million. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says this is to support the economic recovery of entities that suffered the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and encourage their regularization in the coming financial year. As at the 31st of December 2023, a total of $6.78 billion in contributions and interest was outstanding from these institutions, with charitable organizations accounting for $129 million. The amnesty will be in three phases, ending March 2025. For contributions settled by September 30 this year, the NHT will waive all penalty interest on employee and employer contributions. A 20% discount on outstanding employer contributions will also be applied. For all contributions settled between October 1 and December 31 this year, all penalty interest on employee and employer contributions will be waived. And for all contributions settled between January and March 2025, the NHT will waive the penalty interest on employer contributions only. And finally, the Office of the Information Commissioner, OIC, will begin the registration for certain categories of data controllers at the end of the six months grace period on June 30. Ministries, departments and agencies of government high-risk sectors such as financial, health, education, tourism, and ICT services, other businesses that conduct data processing on a large scale or that have a significant risk of prejudice to a large number of data subjects, and data controllers who are required to appoint a data protection officer. With the Data Protection Act now in place, the OIC has launched its official portal for data controllers to register. According to the Prime Minister, the Office of the Information Commissioner will publish the categories of controllers who will be required to be registered at the end of June. Queries may be channeled through the OIC. We are now actively exploring how we can provide further, timely, uh, further time, especially for MSMEs. To this end, the Office of the Information Commissioner will be following general international best practices for adopting a strategic approach to the implementation of the Data Protection Act. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. Creating jobs and implementing business development. Jamaica's Business Ministry, or if you may, the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, is here for implementing policies and projects to aid in the growth of the economy. Learn more next. The Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, MIC, supports several critical growth-inducing sectors spread across the island. Meet the visionaries behind the state's provision of an enabling environment where businesses grow, flourish and expand beyond our shores. The Ministry provides a range of services to support MSME growth and development in Jamaica. Some of these include 
capacity building services for MSMEs access to traditional and non-traditional financing for business development, technical assistance for MSMEs digitalization and digital transformation, support for entrepreneurship and business startups, business formalization services, and facilitation services for MSMEs participation in public procurement. The Business Ministry's MSME division is committed to MSME growth and development. The trade unit provides technical support and advice to local manufacturers and exporters in areas focusing on rules of origin, market access, as well as technical barriers to trade which impact manufacturers accessing international and regional markets. Our services include advocacy for the business community including local manufacturers and exporters, representation of issues affecting trade at both the international and the regional level. We also assist in developing policy positions at international negotiations and developing both defensive and offensive positions. Finally, we also do assist or we do provide the private sector with technical advice in terms of providing assistance, policy recommendations or guidelines on issues impacting trade and how we can navigate um, to increase trade and increase exports. The Business Ministry's trade unit is committed to increasing trade and growing exports. The Commerce Division supports the competitiveness of Jamaican businesses through the following service offerings. We process applications to allow for the suspension of the common external tariff, which allows for the importation of raw materials and other manufacturing inputs duty-free. We also prepare certificates under the safeguard mechanism that enable the manufacturing sector to use inputs from non-CARICOM markets and still have their products qualify for duty-free access to the CARICOM region. We also provide trade information to CARICOM on the ability of local companies to supply goods to the region. Additionally, we process applications from entities to remove limited from the names of companies in keeping with Section 16 of the Companies Act. The Business Ministry's Commerce Division is committed to enabling business success. The Investment Division facilitates both foreign and local direct investments by improving the business environment through laws, regulations, incentives, and international agreements and treaties. The Business Ministry's Investment Division is committed to increasing investments in Jamaica. The Division is responsible for implementing certifiable quality management systems in ministries, departments and agencies with a particular focus on ISO 9001. The Business Ministry's ISO Quality Division is committed to a culture of quality and promoting quality management systems across the public and private sectors. In the Industry Division, we offer two key services to support local manufacturing and other businesses. We process applications for the Productive Inputs Relief Incentive for Manufacturing, and this offers duty-free entry of your raw materials, capital equipment, intermediate goods, and packaging materials to go into your production process. Permits in this regard are valid for up to three years. Secondly, we process applications for special permits for the export of restricted items under the Trade Scrap Metal Regulations. The export of these restricted items, such as scrap copper or train tracks, is prohibited without the approval of the Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce. Note that special permits are valid for one shipment only. The Business Ministry's Industry Division is committed to manufacturing growth and sustaining industries. This is Jamaica's Business Ministry, 
driving the island's push towards First Nation status and the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business. With it being World Autism Awareness Day, it is only fitting that we open our eyes to life beyond all reality. Here's the story of young Adriana Francis. When she was about six months, I realized that she wasn't sitting up. She wasn't creeping. She wasn't making any attempts like that. As a newborn baby coming up, she didn't cry. She hardly cried and she didn't interact with me, really. She would make eye contact now and then. One of the signs of autism is that the children do not make eye contact. They tend to have sensitivity of their hand middles, their foot bottoms, and their mouths, oral sensitivity. Some of them take a long time to get used to changes, to different situations, to different persons. Adriana would be on the moderate to severe level of the spectrum. And she also has something called global developmental delays, meaning several areas of her development are affected. I listen to the yeah, yeah. Good Very job. Good. good job. We're going to go to your favorite place ever, to the playfield. Time to pack up, Adriana. Time to go. For the child with autism, it's very difficult to move from one activity to another. Adriana has um, problems with those. Well, I have to find ways um, to distract her, like I'll sing with her. I'll say a, um, a, a favorite poem or something that will, will distract her, I'll give her a toy that will distract her from what she's doing and get her interested in something else. Come, wait for your shoes. We have to put on your shoes to go to the play field. Come here. She likes to be actually free in her environment and so any opportunity given she'll be running away and as such the shadow is very very important in her life in order to help her to no danger and to keep her on focus. I've been a shadow for Adriana since September 2013. I help her with her academics, self-help skills, social skills, for instance, carrying her to the playground. In all areas, I watch her for the whole day that she's at school. Go Adriana! She won two of her events in sports that had just gone and she got two gold medals for that. She did a flat race, 25 meter. She won that race and we had obstacle race and she won that race also. Sometimes it's a happy journey. Sometimes it feels easy. Sometimes it feels overwhelming. Like you just can't go another day, you know, but at the end of the day, as long as there's love for her, then you can find a strength. Adriana has a little sister who is like her big little sister. Um, when Adriana should have been the one maybe helping to put baby to sleep, baby is the one helping to put Adriana to sleep. She will follow whatever Elisa does, she will listen. Her big brother, DeMarco, he is 14, going 15, and he has been, I mean, from Adriana was a baby, he wanted to change diapers. He wanted to take care of his sister, and he still does. Her daddy is, He's a good support too. Her dad picks her up every morning, takes her home every evening. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I would do it every day, every day. If that child is a part of you, whichever way life turns, whichever way 
things turn, be there for your child. Were it not for you, that child wouldn't be here. And if every father would do the same, just be there for your child. That's the basic law, law of humanity. Be there for your child. The public sector touches the life of every single Jamaican. And that is why the government is transforming the way the public sector operates by making better use of technology to improve the delivery of public services. By improving the compensation of public sector workers to attract and retain the skills needed to run a modern and efficient public service. Through the training of workers to drive performance, innovation and decision making by reducing waste and eliminating corruption, and other measures to make sure the country gets the best value from every dollar spent. The government of Jamaica is building a better public sector for all. No one has control over the way in which we were born, hence the reason we should not discriminate. Inclusivity is a thing, and thankfully, Jamaica has a Disabilities Act that protects the rights of those living with a disability to obtain jobs and contribute to the growth of the country. Although it's only been a year since the new Disabilities Act came into effect, the law has been ensuring positive changes in the lives of persons with disabilities. This is especially so as it relates to strides being taken to increase the number of disabled people being employed. Since the Act, local companies have assisted in training young people with disabilities on how to write resumes and prepare for work. Executive Director of the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities, Dr. Christine Hendricks, says more companies have become proactive. We have seen definite um, effort on the part of companies in terms of uh, whether retrofitting their spaces, uh, writing or drafting po inclusive policies to include persons with disabilities, or indicating that they would require training for their staff and engaging us at the JCPD to help to facilitate the provision of materials you know, so that they can um, make that training available to their staff. But training is not the only area where decisive action is being taken. The new act has piqued individuals and companies' interests regarding matters affecting persons with disabilities. Dr. Hendricks says local companies have expressed worry that disabled persons are not applying for positions at their companies. She says the council is helping to change that. We did indicate to them the availability of the website of the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities, that whenever they have positions to make it available to us because we have a network of the disability sector that we can share you know, such information with whenever we get it. The Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities is also recruiting to assist in the employment of disabled persons. In its first year as a body corporate, the entity is in the process of transitioning to being more independent from the Ministry of Labour and Social Security. So we too are in the process of recruiting and we ensure that the disability sector is aware of the positions that are available so that they too can apply because what better example you know to demonstrate than you know the council having you know the people who have disabilities here in its employ. One such employee is Angine Garrick, the council's receptionist. With the requisite training and her love of interacting with people, Angine's disability has not stopped her from finding gainful employment. She believes the act will continue to help other members of the disabled community get employed. There are a lot of persons out there with disability that need assistance and need, um, in need finding job placement. So yeah, I, I definitely think it will. And what of disabled people who want to be self-employed? Persons with disabilities do have the option of starting their own business, 
you know, and there are opportunities as we look at financial inclusion. And again, um, during Disabilities Awareness Week um, in December, we did have, along with the Bank of Jamaica and other entities, the, the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, looking companies office of jamaica looking at how persons with disabilities are being included in their policies and in their programs to ensure that as they build out financial inclusion persons with disabilities are not left out dr hendricks says the council also empowers individuals with disabilities at the jcpd here we also have programs where persons can um, apply for and receive grants for economic empowerment for their own business because you do have persons with disabilities who are into you know that independence and wanting to become their own uh, bosses you know and so they they do have that opportunity as well so that can be counted you know in the in the whole employment um, space If you happened to miss the Prime Minister's 2024 budget presentation, don't you worry. Up next, we get a second look at the government's plans to build a caring economy for you in the space of irrigation for farming. We are making massive investments in irrigation. I just want to mention what we are doing in Essex Valley. We are spending 1.9 billion Jamaican dollars to complete the installation of irrigation pipes, fittings, and uh, meters to supply and install a renewable energy plant to power the irrigation system and to construct storage and distribution facilities. In addition, um, as part of the project, our farmers in the Essex Valley will benefit from 27 kilometers of roads which are now currently being rehabilitated. In the Southern Plains Irrigation Scheme, in Parnassus in Clarendon, and both Amity Hall and Bridge Pen in St. Catherine, we are investing over $1.5 billion to provide access to irrigation water on the fallow sugar lands to increase agricultural productivity. Last year, I announced that after five decades of announcement, the Pedro Plains Irrigation Scheme would finally become a reality. We have committed to its designation as a national strategic project. This life-changing initiative will use water from the Black River to irrigate the plains and farmlands in the parish. Thousands of farmers across communities such as Flagaman, Greenfield, Barbary Hall, Southfield, and Top Hill will benefit from the project. We have now entered the implementation phase. So this is not just announcements because it's been announced and announced and announced. We have started. Cadastral mapping of the parcels of land to be impacted by the distribution network is underway. A direct result of this work is that over 1,000 titles will be produced this year under the project. Madam Speaker, we are getting things done. Our program concludes for today, but be sure to join us again tomorrow for another lineup geared towards providing you with information on the government's policies and initiative for building a better Jamaica. You may visit our website, gis.gov.jm, to re-watch this edition or to catch up on lots more. I am Adrian Atkinson from our production team here at the GIS. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.